Hey there nation and welcome to the show where we help you to play miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Commander Cheapski, and we are back with another episode of Way of the Underhive. This is a series that is dedicated to brand new players of Necromunda. In this series we'll talk about different ways that you can start up your very first gang for your very first campaign of Necromunda. We also talk about the various benefits and negatives of making alliances with the Merchants Guild, the Criminal Alliances, as well as Noble Houses. And on today's episode we will be talking about making an alliance with the Noble House Olanti. So these are one of the very first of the Noble Houses that we'll be talking about in this series. Uh, we recently did a poll on my channel and my community tab and we actually had a list of different houses you'd like to see done first for uh, for our Noble House Alliances. In this case, there was an overwhelming majority who wanted to see House Ulanti. So in this video, we'll talk about the positive as well as negative impact they make on campaign play. We'll also talk about the tactical and strategic assets that House Ulanti brings to you with their alliance. We'll talk about their benefits and drawbacks as well as their court advisor's entourage. And finally, give you our overall conclusion of this alliance with House Ulanti. So that being said, let's get this video on a roll. So the first thing we're going to talk about is what positive impact making an alliance with the Noble House of Ulanti has on campaign play. Now one of the big things you need to remember about no matter what alliance you take is this special rule called a battling part. And how pretty much how this rule works is that you receive all the benefits of taking extra fighters in your crews without none of the negatives. So for example, if it's a really good way to balance out numbers in this scenario because they don't take up any crew slots. So because of that, bringing in experienced fighters and better equipment without impacting your crews is always a powerful ability to have. So for example, if you're in a scenario that only allows you to take 10 fighters maximum, you might be able to bring additional fighters because the Band Apart rule does not apply to your guys' alliances as well. Not to mention, when it comes to your guys' outlaw or law-abiding status, it doesn't matter to a noble house. So if you're one of those outlaw gangs, and you don't really care for the criminal alliances that they offer, or maybe you're a law-abiding gang, you don't care for the guild alliances, you can always make an alliance with the nobles because nobles don't really care about the status of your gang because as far as the noble house is concerned, your gang is just a tool and they use whatever tools they need to in order to get their agendas uh, taken care of. So those are some of the positive impacts that having a house alliance with the House of Lanti really makes. So let's talk about the negative impacts of making an alliance with House Ulanti. So first of all, the alliances with noble houses can be easily broken with drawbacks. There are various, various different types of drawbacks that are associated with each of these noble houses. These drawbacks could of course have some serious implications for your gang, whether it's deletion of your fighters or taking away income or some other horrible method. Not to mention, each of these noble houses have very much a Game of Thrones level pettiness, all right? Nobles are backstabbing, plotting, and mercurial allies at his best so keep that in mind before you make an alliance with any of the noble houses sometimes their drawbacks could be more of a pain than they're actually worth and that's just kind of figures because you know these noble houses did not get to where they're at just by being nice so always keep that in mind whenever you make an alliance with a noble house especially with house Ulanti. and we're going to talk about that now so when it comes to the Noble House of House Ulanti, I like to break down every alliance between what I like to call tactical assets as well as strategic assets. Tactical assets are game mechanics that affect either individuals or actual combat on the battlefield. So this is what's going to be affecting your games on the tabletop. Meanwhile, strategic assets are game mechanics that impact a gang during the course of the campaign. So these are things that like different events that take place in the pre and the post battle sequence, also in the campaign at large. Now when it comes to tactical assets, House Ulanti has a very powerful tactical asset with their court advisors entourage. It's very much a close combat oriented entourage with some really interesting game mechanics attached to it as well. So if you're one of those kind of gangs that are looking for an edge in combat and you need some additional oomph in within your battlefield on your tabletop, this might be the alliance for you. At the same time, House Alanti also makes an excellent strategic asset because the house is known for generating income. This is the house you want to make the alliance with if you want to generate income with House Alanti because their income generating abilities is very, very powerful. However, there are some risks involved because it is a noble house, but we'll talk about that when we break down the benefits as well as the drawbacks. So one of the positives and strong benefits of making an alliance with House Alanti is that if you're an Escher gang, you have a very you have a strong alliance right off the bat. House Alanti and House Escher have a very long, proud tradition of being allies for the longest time. So because of that would be much more difficult for you to break this alliance if you decide to make it. Now one of the benefits you get, of course, is what's called excessive wealth, which means that the, at the end of every single battle, you earn 2d6 times 10 credits after the end of every battle. And that's all that needs to be said about that. For obvious reasons, that's a very powerful ability. Being able to net up to 200 credits from a battle is just beyond 
important how you quickly you can make wealth just from that excessive wealth ability as well at the same time you also have what's called duelist and many faces and these are actual benefits that benefit the court advisors entourage specifically and the court here always attacks first in close combat that's one of the nice things about that rule with the duelist rule so very very important as well at the same time you have the many faces rule which means that the mirror mask what's in the uh, entourage can switch places with the court here at any time another really powerful ability as well with an entourage but like i said we'll talk about that uh game account we talk about the court advisors uh individually but just to give you guys an idea very very powerful alliance uh benefits now let's go and talk about the drawbacks the most obvious one is called inevitable trail basically what happens if you lose a battle you automatically have to test the alliance and if you actually break the alliance your opponent automatically gets the alliance with house ulanti for the next battle so because of that that's one of the problems of actually making an alliance with house ulanti like i said the pettiness and the backstabbing with noble houses is strong especially so with us uh they didn't get to where they get to by being good at the same time you also have another drawback called board now and this is kind of reflects the fact that they're kind of paid that way. If you roll for your excessive wealth and you roll doubles, you automatically have to test the alliance. So that's another thing you got to worry about as well. It's not such a problem if you're a House Escher game because you automatically get a strong alliance with House Ulanti. But if you're any other game, though, this could break your uh, alliance pretty quickly, in which case your enemy automatically gets that alliance. So keep that in mind when making an alliance with the House Ulanti. All right, so up next, let's go ahead and talk about the court advisors. This is the entourage that House Alanti will send to help you out in each of your guys' fights. So first of all, let's talk about the Alanti Courtier. The Alanti Courtier actually has some pretty good stats. They have 5-inch movement, 3-plus weapon skill, 4-plus ballistic skill. They have 3 strength and toughness, 2 wounds, 3-plus for initiative. They also have 2 attacks. They have 6-plus for leadership, 6-plus for cool, 7-plus for willpower, as well as 7-plus for intelligence. Now, when it comes to the actual equipment they actually have, they equipped with a displacer field, as well as a NATO pistol, they also have a power sword, and they also have the counterattack and step aside skills, which is really good equipment, especially when you combine with the skills, makes this guy for a very, very powerful close combat fighter. Not to mention, you also have the duelist special rule, which is exceptionally powerful because no matter what happens, they always get to attack first in close combat. Even if they're charged against, they actually get to fight first. So for example, if you're taking on a very powerful close combat gang as an enemy, like Elias for example, and let's pretend that your opponent decides to use the Stim Slug Stash on their champion, their Forge Boss, who's carrying a Master Crafted Renderizing Axe, and they charge at your Ulanti Courtier thing and they're going to one-shot kill him, not so fast because the Ulanti Courtier gets to go first. And this person's packing a, a needle pistol and a power sword, so they can really cause some problems right off the bat. At the same time, because they're also packing a power sword and a needle pistol, oddly enough, they also make really good attackers for stealth missions as well, because the needle pistol doesn't make any noise, and the power sword can really one-shot people if you actually manage to get the attack in there. So like I said, very, very powerful when it comes to the Elanti Courtier. Now, if the Elanti Courtier was enough, you also get a second fighter known as a Mirror Mask. So let's go and talk about this fighter. Now for their stats, their stats are actually relatively close to the court, uh, the courtier, which makes sense because the mirror mask is a dobby, buddy, uh, body double for the courtier. This character has a 5 inch movement, they got 3 weapon skill, 4 plus skill, they have 3 strength and toughness, 2 wounds, they have 3 plus for initiative, and they have 2 attacks. However, they have an 8 plus for leadership, 6 plus for cool, 8 plus for willpower, and 7 plus for intelligence. So, like again, this guy is a very powerful close combat fighter as well. Uh, this guy comes with a displacer field, they're also packing a needle pistol as well as a power sword, and they're also got the nerves of steel skill as well. So, like I said before, really powerful close combat fighter. This guy is good to protect your Elanti Courtier because they got the nerves of steel ability, which means that they get shot at and pinned. They can escape pinning with their cool ability. They got a needle pistol and a power sword, so it makes it really nice to have that as well. At the same time, you also have the Mini Faces special rule, which is also really good too. The Mini Faces special rule, pretty much whenever the Mirror Mask activate, they may swap positions with the Elanti Courtier, regardless of where the two fighters are on the battlefield. Even if the fighters are engaged or prone, the Mirror Mask can still take this person's place, which is really great because it allows you to protect your Courtier at all costs, which is really, really nice. And at the same time, maybe your Courtier is taking some damage, the Mirror Mask can take the place, finish it off. It's a, quite a big nasty surprise for your enemies. Mirror Mask and the Courtier are just a perfect combination together as well. And like I said before, the Mirror Mask also actually makes a really good stealth uh, operative because of the Needle Pistol as well as the Power Sword. And just like the Courtier, uh, the courtier, they can actually take out people in stealth missions. So if stealth is one of those things you need to work on, these two might be the ones to help you out with that problem. 
So in conclusion, House Ulanti is one of the best alliances available for a player in my opinion. They have very powerful tactical as well as very powerful strategic assets that will help a game to climb the ranks especially when generating income. Generating income is a very important part of a campaign setting and this alliance will definitely make that happen. The only thing you need to worry about though is to watch your back at all times because at any moment House Alanti might even break your alliance or even backstab you so be careful. Uh, just like that when it comes to any how a noble alliance with any of the noble houses always watch your back with these guys. So there you have it. This is our overview of House Ulanti. As always, please feel free to like, comment, and or subscribe. Your guys' input is invaluable to us as always. Also check us out on Facebook, Instagram, as well as blogger.com for all the latest greatest hobby news related to our channel. That's good to do for this week, guys. We will catch you guys next one. Stay classy, guys. Peace out.